Today I'm going to attempt to answer an important question. Why are so many elderly Chinese unvaccinated? This is Reports on China, I'm Mandy Borham. Let's get reporting. China is undergoing a massive shift away from COVID zero at the moment, which will expose two massive problems the country faces if the virus is allowed to spread relatively unchecked. An inadequate medical system with nowhere near enough ICU beds per capita and a vulnerable elderly population that has not reached a high enough level of vaccination. The video you're watching right now apparently shows uh, all patients in a Hunan quarantine facility being told they can go home, which means positive cases uh, are going back into the community. If you're watching this from overseas, uh, this might seem normal or the right thing to do, but in China, this is nothing short of shocking and something that even just last week would have been unimaginable. As the country pivots toward relaxing its strict COVID-0 policy, Beijing has asked governments around the country to do their best to increase the vaccination rate among the elderly as quickly as possible, something I think should have been done uh, a long time ago. So why is it that China's elderly are underrepresented when it comes to full vaccination? Well, first things first, let's take a look at the facts. In China, fully vaccinated means three shots, basically the two main shots and a booster. Let's take a look at the percentages. Overall, China's 1.4 billion are among the most fully vaccinated in the entire world at 92.61%. For comparison, Japan sits at around 82.5%, India is 77.42%, the UK 79% and the US 81%. So in terms of overall vaccination, China beats many developed countries. The problem, though, is in the low number of elderly who are fully vaccinated. In China, only 65.83% of people over 80 years of age are fully covered, which is obviously unacceptably low. So why are so many of China's elderly not fully vaccinated? Well, today I'll share my five reasons with you before we have a quick chat with a friend of the show, Eric Jong, about his thoughts. Number one, vaccination has never been mandatory in China. Now, contrary to what people might expect of a country that Western media often describes as a draconian dictatorship, vaccination in China has never been mandatory. From the government's perspective, vaccination has always been advisable, but not mandatory. Now, there were a few instances where city governments tried to enforce rules which would have meant that only vaccinated people could visit certain public spaces, but following public uproar, they were scrapped. Probably the most famous example is when the Beijing city government tried to introduce such a measure from July 11 this year. It was quickly cancelled after feedback from the public. Number two, China's COVID situation is the opposite of most other countries. While many countries around the world were facing massive outbreaks of more deadly variants of COVID-19, China was largely COVID-free. Now, that meant that while other countries were rushing to save lives by vaccinating those groups that were at the highest risk, including the elderly, China was under no such pressure. Basically, the chance of elderly people catching COVID in China in 2020 and 2021 was very, very low. So in China, these very new and relatively unknown COVID vaccines were first offered to young people and healthy people who were least at risk of being harmed by possible side effects. Number three, older people seldom go out. People over 80 years of age, owing to their often limited mobility and not being required to regularly go to work, for example, are just out and about a whole lot less than younger people. Now, because of this, they consider themselves uh, at even lower risk of catching COVID-19 than the general population. This makes sense when you think about it. During the week, for example, those of us who are of working age are having to commute to and from work on busy public transport at least five times a week, while those aged over 80 often hang out at home or in their communities. For them, this seems to be another reason to avoid getting vaccinated at all. Number four, not enough mobile nursing staff. Now, following on from number three, it would make sense to uh, utilise mobile nurses to go door-to-door offering vaccination to those aged 80 plus, but there simply isn't enough manpower to undertake such a mammoth task. China's elderly population is huge and being fully vaccinated would require three visits per person, a huge job that up until now has not been prioritised. But with China's pivot to relaxing COVID measures and the call from Beijing to increase elderly vaccination, we may see more effort put into achieving door-to-door visits for these people. 
Number five, people are afraid of side effects. Like every country in the world, China has a significant number of people who either don't trust the vaccines or are afraid of negative side effects. This number is higher in the 80 plus population because that group of people tend to have a much higher prevalence of underlying conditions, which could put them at a higher risk of side effects. Of course, like every country, China also has a list of conditions for vaccination. And many people with serious underlying conditions who are taking a cocktail of other medications are recommended to avoid vaccination at this stage. Okay, now I want to bring in Eric Zhong. He's a young business owner and media commentator living in Shanghai for a bit of a Chinese perspective. Hi, Eric. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Andy. It's great to be on the show. Good to see you. So I wanted to know from your point of view, um, how do Chinese people view COVID vaccination in general? Well, I think um, it's very hard for me to make an all-encompassing summary of all Chinese people's uh, opinions. But I mean, because as with any other issues, Chinese people here um, think of things very differently, I would say. However, most people around me do believe that um, COVID vaccination is one of the key measures to help us get out of the pandemic safely. Mm. Um, I mean, there could be people who might not get vaccinations um, because of their particular health conditions. But thus far, if I'm remembering this correctly, there have been more than 3.44 billion doses given out in China. Well, that's definitely a lot of doses. So in your opinion, why is it that so many elderly people here in China are just not getting vaccinated? Well, again, the reasons are rather complex. Um, and I would agree with most of what you've just said. Um, I'm someone who is keen to listen to different perspectives, stories, um, and reasonings behind. So I think most of the personal narratives I have heard kind of correspond with uh, the rationales you have shared. I think one of the main reasons, uh, well, the most important one could be some elderly think it is unlikely that they would get infected mm. uh, because there have been much fewer cases here in China compared with many other countries and regions, um, and also because they are not uh, that socially active. Right. So since any medical interventions could bring about some risks, these elderly just don't bother getting the vaccinations. Um, and I think another main reason is because some senior citizens with underlying diseases that may render them more vulnerable um, could be slightly concerned. And the anecdotes that, you know, some side effects might appear after vaccination um, could even get them a bit more worried. So they prefer using masks, washing their hands frequently and avoiding the crowds to um, protect themselves rather than getting the jabs. The Chinese government seems to be pivoting towards uh, increasing vaccination among the elderly. So how do you think they'll go about it? Oh, well, um, first of all, I've been following the updates quite attentively. And for most people that I know, um, it's uh, great news that uh, the Chinese government has been lifting a lot of covid related restrictions. But I mean, this would also come with responsibilities mm. to ourselves mm. and the social fabric we're in. Um, I mean, I believe from the state's perspective, the COVID vaccination has always been encouraged and not mandatory. Mm. There has been few, if any, equivalences to vaccine passport or something of sort. Um, and I think the government would still respect people's freedom of choice, um, concerning COVID vaccine and try their best at this in the same time, uh, in the meantime, to encourage more to get um, vaccinated and boosted. But would there be lumps and bumps um, in the process of execution? Certainly. I mean, it's the same that goes with um, any other policies regarding such a huge population on such a immense piece of land, right? Yeah, I guess only time will tell. We'll wait and see. Lastly, a bit of a personal question. Um, have your grandparents been vaccinated and what was kind of the thought process behind that? Oh, well, they have been vaccinated and they were boosted as well. The rationale was quite simple, actually. Mm. Uh, my grandparents, uh, they pretty much go out of their home every day. Um, and even though they have hypertension, it's been very well maintained uh, with years of medical treatment. The vaccinations um, has been, you know, quite safe, statistically speaking, mm. and they would like to contribute to the herd immunity so that we can all move out of the pandemic together more quickly and safely. Awesome. Eric John, thank you so much. 
Very interesting points there, you guys, as we head into what we could fairly call, fairly call a new paradigm here in China. I think, though, that despite the speed at which uh, we're seeing some relaxations in some cities, full opening up of China is still a long way off. Now, according to the government's plan, vaccinations need to be spaced at least three months apart. So I seriously doubt China will open to the outside world for a little while, at least until uh, there's a huge increase in the number of vaccinations in 80 plus. But what do you guys think? In China, are they doing the right thing? Are you surprised at how quickly Beijing has listened to the people? And do you think the drive to vaccinate more elderly people will be successful? As always, let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.